The second part of this lesson is about composite figures. And we're going to talk about spheres and hemispheres. Well, what's a hemisphere? Think about where we live. We live in the northern hemisphere of our planet. A hemisphere splits a cylinder, uh, a sphere, excuse me, a sphere in half. So if I look at this picture, this is a picture of a silo, and hopefully you know what a silo is. A silo on a farm is a place where the farmer stores their grain. And a silo is made up of two figures. And so in order to find out the volume of this silo, we're going to break it down into the two figures that you see. So the first figure that we see is the bottom part of this silo. And what shape is that? That is a cylinder. Plus, the top of that silo is actually a hemisphere, which we just said was half a sphere. So this is our plan, is that we have to find the volume of a cylinder, and then we're going to add to that the volume of the hemisphere. Okay, so let's draw the cylinder first. So we've got a round bottom, a round top. And what are the facts that we know about that cylinder? Do we know the radius of the cylinder? And yes, we do, because it would be the same radius as the hemisphere. So that is 12 feet. Do we know the height of the cylinder? We don't know the height yet. How could we find the height of the cylinder? I want you to think about that for a moment. Let's go look at the hemisphere though. So that hemisphere is half of a circle. Okay, and what do we know about that hemisphere? We know that the radius is 12 feet. Well, I drew the radius horizontally. But if this is half of a sphere, and we said a sphere, um, every radius on a sphere is every distance of that radius is going to be the same. Every point on the sphere is equidistant from our center. So that would mean if I drew a vertical radius, that vertical radius would be 12 feet as well. Would we all agree to that? And I'm hoping you say, yeah, Ms. Stiller, I agree with that. So I know that my radius here is 12 feet, and I know my radius on my cylinder is also 12 feet. Unfortunately, or fortunately, for a cylinder, what was the volume of a cylinder? It was the area of the base times the height of that cylinder. So volume is equal to the area of the base, pi radius squared, times the height of that cylinder. I don't know that height yet. But what do we know? The height of that cylinder would be the total height of that silo. How tall is that silo? Would be 52 feet. But I have that hemisphere sitting on top of that silo. How tall is that uh, hemisphere that's on top of the cylinder? Well, if we look at this picture of the hemisphere, the radius is 12 feet. So the height of the cylinder is going to be that 52 feet minus the 12 feet, which is the radius of that cylinder, which is going to give me a height of 40 feet. So now in my picture, I know that the height of that cylinder is 40 feet. Let's talk about the formula for the hemisphere. 
we said that a hemisphere is half a sphere. So I would have volume is equal to half the formula for the volume of a sphere. The volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi radius cubed. So now I have the formula for my cylinder. I have the formula for my hemisphere. And I'm going to add that together to get the volume of that silo. Okay, so let's work one figure at a time. We have the volume of that cylinder is pi radius squared times height. So volume is equal to pi. The radius is 12. We're going to square that. And the height is 40. So volume is equal to 12 squared is 144 times 40 times pi. So volume in terms of pi is going to be 5,760 pi feet cubed. And we're going to leave this in terms of pi. So we had our formula. We plugged in our facts. And we're going to leave it in terms. Oh, I spelled that wrong. In terms. Let me erase that. That's terrible. Um, in terms. Sorry about that. In terms of pi. Okay, now let's let's go ahead and do the silo. We have volume is equal to one half times four thirds pi radius cubed. So we have our formula. Let's simplify that a little because I'm looking here that I can cross cancel. Two and four, the common factor is two. So now I can I can simplify that to be volume is equal to two thirds pi radius cubed. Volume is equal to 2 thirds times 12 cubed times pi. Okay, so volume is equal to 2 thirds. 12 times 12 times 12 is 1,728 times pi. If I add up, 8 and 2 is 10 and 7 is 17, and 1 is 18. Is 18 divisible by 3? And the answer is yes. So I know I can cross cancel. 3 goes into 17 five times with a remainder of 2. 3 goes into 22 seven times with a remainder of 1. And 3 goes into 18 six times. So my volume is equal to... 2 times 576 pi. So volume is equal to 12, carry the 1, 5, 1,152 pi feet cubed. And again, we plugged in our facts. And we have our answer in terms of pi. The reason I left it like that is because now I'm going to add those together and I only have to estimate once instead of estimating twice. So the volume of that silo is 5,760 pi plus 1,152 pi. That would be the cylinder plus the hemisphere. So the volume of that silo is equal to... 6,912 pi. I'm going to go ahead now and substitute in my pi using the button on my calculator. And I get that the volume is approximately 21,703 and 68 hundredths feet cubed. OK, 
Okay, so this is the volume of volume of the silo.